Um, it's great to be on the summit. Uh, the view is tremendous. Um, I was thinking of this coming in this morning, looking at Mount San Bernardino and Mount San Gorgonio, and thinking how wonderful it would be to be up there uh, to be able to see so far. And I think that's one of the wonderful things about a meeting like this that we can see so far and see the vision of what might exist. But one of the things I have to remark is that I think the vision is enormous. It's as big as the horizon that one can see from the top of Mount San Bernardino. And coming to grips with that is going to inevitably require us to come down off the mountain and to descend to a more practical level. And I want to do that to some extent in this talk by talking about GIS and where GIS has come from and where it currently is and how it might serve the needs of design better. So this is perhaps the beginning of a discussion that will go on for the next two and a half days on exactly what we do to move this agenda forward. So I think this takes us in a different direction from the previous two talks, which I think provided a wonderful motivating context for this, for this meeting. And I'd like now to look at, at the GIS issues um, quite specifically. So let me start with my interpretation of the geodesign vision. And this is pretty much consistent with all the material that's on the website and with some of the discussions that have led up to this meeting. And essentially it has two parts. And I think it's important to emphasize the, the relationship between these two parts. One part is about input and editing and recording. And the word sketch is used very often. The idea that the user might be able to input a sketch of an idea, to have that input into the system, to do this collaboratively involving, and, and um, there's talk of millions of people being involved in this process. To do it from different kinds of devices, from very sophisticated devices and very primitive ones, to transform those sketches into features, to add them to a geodatabase. And this is very much what our sketch has been um, building towards. And it's also something related to, for example, Google SketchUps. There's, there's technologies of this nature out there. But then the other half, and, and to me this is very much the other half, and that's the half which allows those sketches and ideas to be evaluated, analyzed, to use prediction, to see what the consequences would be, to modify them, to improve them, to do this according to well-defined procedures. And this, of course, is something that GIS is tremendously powerful at doing. And we have in GIS an abundance of the kinds of tools needed for that process. So in some ways, I see the, this meeting as trying to bring these two topics together, bringing together the idea of interaction and sketch and, and idea creation with evaluation based on the knowledge that's been accumulated in many disciplines. Now, if this sounds familiar, of course it is, and it's very much taking us back to the world of Ian McHarg and his school at the University of Pennsylvania, because much of what McHarg was trying to do in that period was along these lines. It was using knowledge of meteorology, geology, hydrology, plant ecology, animal ecology, limnology, and computation and remote sensing to build the kinds of tools that would be needed to achieve that vision. And so one of the things we might do, and this, in fact, is, is a slide from a presentation that um, Jack and, and Carl Steinitz and I made at the National Science Foundation in 2003, one of the things we might do is to try to move forward that McHarg vision and move it into the context of 2010 and see, what, in fact, what has happened to that vision. So let me just briefly focus on, on what has happened to that concept from the 1960s, the design with nature concept because McHarg talked, of course, about layers, and at the time his primary mode of operation was transparent layers superimposed on a simple light table. And it's easy, of course, to see how that has led over the years to the layer concept that underlies GIS. So in many ways, what we're doing with GIS today is an implementation of that 1960s idea, which for, of course, a variety of obvious reasons, McHarg wasn't able to, to implement to the kind of, of level that we can today. Um, here's a quote from a wonderful book, and I, I don't know if any of you have had a chance to, to read it. It's McHarg's autobiography. It was published by Wiley in 1996. It's called A Quest for Life. 
And he says, for the first time, a Department of Landscape Architecture could recruit a faculty of distinguished natural scientists sharing the ecological view and determined to integrate their perceptions into a holistic discipline applied to the solution of contemporary problems. And I think that still stands as very much what underpins why we're here. That same thinking, I think, is very much um, here today. What he was talking about was integrating science into action, integrating the knowledge that we have in a variety of disciplines into intervention and action in the community. This has frequently been emulated, but very often that intervention component has been weakened. And uh, Jack will remember in 2003 when we made this presentation at the National Science Foundation and suggested that the National Science Foundation might foster this kind of thinking the first response we got was from one of the audience who raised his hand and said, that's the scariest thing I've ever heard in my life. The idea that you would take science and try to use it in a practical context was something quite alien to the basic scientists of, of the National Science Foundation. Moreover, I think the social context of this is missing, and it's something that today we would have to take much more seriously. And finally, computation and remote sensing, very primitive in the days of the 1960s, today, of course, are much more powerful. So if I were to try to move this forward, and this again is a 2003 slide, it would suggest this, that computation and remote sensing are now an inevitable part of all of this. Um, David Simonet and Walter Tobler, in fact, were advisors to Ian McCarg back in the 60s. Bruce McDougall was hired. He was an author of a very early text in geographic information systems. And technology became a source of data, an engine for computation, a means of visualization, and it provided a framework that was formal and replicable, something that could be defended in court, something that could be shared between people because we shared an understanding of what it was trying to do. 